Check it out. It's Rob Lowe. I'm over here at Thizzler, fooling with the boys, man. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and subscribe below. Check us out, man, right now. Okay, man, I started off, man, with just a Casio keyboard, you know what I mean? And then after the little Casio, I always play with that every day, you know what I mean? For like years. <laughs> Self-taught, like just heard, heard music all my life in my, in my younger years. And then just got a hold of some black and white keys that made noises, you know what I mean? And then it just, I always did two hands, so I got better with two. And then ding, ding, boom, ding, ding, ding with the, the ding with the boom at the same time. It's like, oh, to your ear at all, for real, rather than ding, ding, and a boom, boom, boom. So I always did that as a youngster. So when I did that on that little Casio, and I got a four track, it was a rap. Oh, let's plug this in. I'm trying to record this. Loop this. You know what I mean? Just loop it. So it came from self-talk, just all from the mind. Then my, my family seen I was into that. And next thing you know, every Christmas it was something, and birthday it was something pertaining to the studio. So that's all I wanted. So by eight years old, playing ball and shit like that, Pop Warner, I used to make beats at the house at eight years old and take my cassette tapes, you know what I mean, to my football practices and shit and pass them out to my niggas, like, bro, y'all like these beats? And uh, one of my boys was like, man, don't be bringing no pots and pans, you know what I mean? I was like, all right, it's good. So I brought the cassette to the school, I mean, to the practice. Everybody was off that shit. And everybody that was at practice was from the hood, you know what I mean, for El Pueblo and things like that. So I'm like, all right, cool. They took it back to the hood. I started getting like, man, Rob, you made this, you made this. I'm like, damn, they're 12 by this time. You know what I mean? I made these beats. Cranking, cranking. You know, I used to see my pops and moms and them sing every Friday. You feel me? With the microphones out, fish fries. You know what I mean? They used to sing. So I used to, I used to like that type of stuff. I used to be like, man, with that music, that's that music every day. <clears throat> so as I got older, it just lived with me. You feel me? So as I started getting doper on the little, the little sampler, Casio to a little sampler, I started sampling. About 10, 12, 12 years old, I started sampling. Next thing you know, this boy Hus, Hus used to, he's my neighbor, so he used to live like next to me. So I let him hear some beats. He like, bro, you got studio? I'm like, I got studio. Let's do it. Wow, we like 14, 15. We printing up, printing up CDs. And uh, one of my boy Arsenal, JR, one of the rappers out the P, he, uh, he was one of my main buyers. He'd be like, you got a CD today? You got a cassette today? You got a cassette today? Not a CD cassette. I'm like, yeah, I got him. He's like, bro, I'm like, let me get one. I'm like, man, I'm down to my last two. I need dub for this. He'll give me dub for it. You know what I mean? It was like a regular routine. Next thing you know, I had to up it. You know what I mean? 30, I need 30 for this. So I was selling cassettes for $30. At school, me and her slaps and Jack, you know what I mean? But before we met Jack, we was uh, printing up cassettes and doing shit like that too. You know what I mean? And then <clears throat> along the way, the name got popping. Fed and Jack moved to the P. You know what I mean? They was young niggas. I mean, shit, 14, 15, 16. And uh, it surfaced. The music was hot. You know what I mean? And, uh, and shit, Brody's was around. We was just all around. We wasn't even on no rap shit. We was just around. We was around. I was around Jack, uh, my boy Tron. And then Jack just started freestyling. I'm like, bruh. You know how to rap, bro? He like, nigga. I'm like, all right. I got the lab, bro. At the tilt, you know what I mean? He like, all right, cool. I brought him to the tilt. That uh, you know these woldies be asking, Udi Mac Ten. You know what I mean? Can you be my wife now? You can be my hoe. Bring me all my cheese. Stack these cheese. You feel me? That's when we knocked that out. We like, bro. We let the world hear that. Come on, man. This shit was going crazy. So I, once I knew I could sell these these cassettes, though. You know what I mean? This was the test. Once I knew I could sell the cassettes with my bros. Then I knew we got something, you know what I mean? I knew we got something. So then I opened up the doors a little bit more for the bros. You know, at the house I had the studio, so I was like, all right, I got Fetty. I got Fetty, Huss, and Jack coming through. You feel me? All right, let me get, let me open up a little door. You know what I mean? I ride a bus and all. Let me just get Ryder hang around too. So let's get Ryder in the lab. I got all the bros in the lab, bro. I'm looking around. AP came too. I'm like, bro, we got pure lab. I got a group. Fuck it. I'm a just, bro, every day. Bro, used to come to my house every day after that, bro, from 15, since I was 15 and up, come to the house every day to work on music. I mean, during school hours, I mean, it wasn't no high school, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I would, I would ace my tests and shit, so I would cut, you know what I mean, and do what I, what I can. And then uh, every morning, my parents would go to work at 5.30 in the morning, 5.30 to 6 every day for years. And then that's when our studio time would, you know what I mean, would be with Jack, Huss, you feel me, Clyde. We'll be in the lab from fucking, man, bruh, 
from morning to about 3.30. You know what I mean? It's time to clean the house up, make sure to make it seem like wasn't nobody home, make it seem like I was in school and shit. But I'm cutting school to make, you know, sacrificing to, you know, be something with my bros. You feel me? That I know I can get paid from this shit. Forget school. You feel me? <laughs> For real though, at a point, at a point it was like that. But um, but once I found out, you know, as a group, the mob figures, Rob Blow, we can sell cassettes. I'm like, bro, let's, let's just keep doing it. Let's just keep doing it. I was raised on bad music, you know what I mean? But also, shit, I was also raised on like rock, you know? I was also raised on like um, soul music, gospel music, pretty much everything, you know what I mean? And, uh, and just incorporated into the sound that shit, this, the sound that really got just for the soul, you know what I mean? It ended up being a, a sound that's for the soul. You know, and, and when you when you hear some music, it's undeniable in the heart when you you just feel it. You know what I mean? You you might just feel it like this. You might go like this. You know what I'm saying? You might jump up and dance. But I make sure I put that into the music and incorporate that so it has all genres and years mixed together. And you know that that shit's like not easy and shit. You know, it's not like putting a hi hat together. It's like how I'm gonna put this hi hat together. You know, if I put this hi hat, is it gonna sound like this new shit? That's how. Is it gonna blend with this old Temptation hi hat that's under the cut? You know what I mean? Like, so I'll be blending shit, and it just it it applies to the soul, and that's what I do. You know what I mean? Like, and and also having artists like the Jack and Huss, you know what I mean, and having them around while making that sound, putting their stories to that shit, that shit, and it affects the fans, and the fans become lifetime members. You know, that shit's huge. So I, I feel um, humble about that. You know, very humble that. I don't really get too much exposure of being the nucleus. I don't get too much exposure at all. I really kind of don't want the exposure. I just really want to just focus on the music, making sure our music is tight. So, uh, so there's a song for you. We did two versions. We did one with Huss version, and then we did a Mac Dre version. Um, I did that song the same place I did, at the same time I did uh, the Jack Artist album. So those beats was, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Kilo, Kilo, Kilo came by the house. Uh, Dre wasn't there. Kilo came by the house and um, grabbed some slaps from me. You feel me? And uh, I gave him like 15 beats or something. And Dre picked like all damn near almost all 15 of them motherfuckers. You feel me? All everything that was on that CD was everything he did with me that came out. So I was like, all right, cool. I didn't know that he did something to the song. There's a song for you yet. I didn't even know yet. So when it came out, that's when I knew. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, we got the Huss version. Feel me? But I'm like, Hus version never released. Cause you know, we players, bro, we players too. So we like, all right, we did it first, but Hus did it first, but that's that's the Mac, that's the Cuddy, bro. So you know what I mean? Cuddy owned that, that's Cuddy shit. Fuck that. So Cuddy, Cuddy shit dropped, bro, and that, that brought me. I actually made that beat when I was making the Jack Artist album. Kilo came and got this beat CD. The album, the song came out like two months later, you know what I mean, under Sumo. And that was, that was huge. It actually made another, Besides the Mile Figure album, that was a whole nother, another whole notch for me. That actual one song, you know? You know? And that, that publishing is still coming in. I remember Fed, Fed and uh, Fetty and, uh, and, and Jack came to my door and shit, and, and it was like, bruh. What's up, bro? I'm like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? You're like, bro, we got some issues with these these um, these Spanish people. I'm like, for real? He like, yeah, they threatened us, talking about they smack us and shit. I'm like, bro, hell no. Nah. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro, what's what's up? What we need? You feel me? I got older brothers, so my whole thing was, go get the bangers for the brodies. For, go feel me for my brothers. You know, what I mean? like, what's up, bro? We need? I got it. But I was acting like, you know what I mean? Like, I got it. I got the gun. You feel me? It's good. So I went upstairs and got the little 380 for the bros, you know what I mean? It was like, huh, bro, take the 380, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we was young niggas, though. We were telling them, bro, take the 380. <laughs> bro, that was so funny to me, bro. To me, bro, I'll never forget that because, you know, it's big shit, you know what I mean, out there. And we was young niggas, you know what I mean? And I just remember, bro, they needed the little pistol and shit, so I gave them the pistol like, huh, what you supposed to do for your brodies, you feel me? I mean, I didn't sit there and say, is y'all lying, bro? Is you for real? You know what I mean? I might have second guessed it like, man, I know y'all. Y'all joke a lot. We joke a lot. You know what I'm saying? But hold on, I'm not taking it like a joke because if something do happen to my bros, I don't want to be, you know what I mean? When I could have helped, I did. You feel me? So I remember that for life. You feel me? And uh, that's how 
I treat all my bros too, regardless. If they need something, I'm gonna make it happen. You feel me? Even if shit, I'll take from, you know what I mean? Take from somebody to get it from my bros if we need it. That's just the kind of dude I am, bro. You feel me? But at the same time, bro, like that, that shit just, that stay with me forever. You feel me? It's a few, it's a few, bro, it's more than a few. <laughs> you feel me? But that's one of them, though. It's more than a few, but that's one of them. Gotta have your publishing. Without it, you won't get paid for streaming the way you would want to get paid. And basically, just whenever you do a song, just track it down. And how you track it down, can't track it down without not having your publishing. You gotta register the song first, turn it in, and if you get like X amount of streams, like 80 cents for that stream, let's just say 80 cents, and it streams, and you realize, oh, four cents came from JPay. Oh, not JPay, because they don't stream. Four, four cents came from Google. Google. Uh, another eight cent came from Amazon. So you're looking at all these people who's promoting. These are the people who where you need to be promoting your music now because they're issuing checks. They're issuing cash. They're issuing cash for your streams, cash for your royalties, YouTube. So basically you want to look at that and make sure you hit those points, you know, because basically I run, a, I run a production label. So I would have to tell my artists, you know what I mean, register your songs so you get paid for them the right way. If not, they're just going to be sitting ducks and the money's just going to be accumulating and no one's gonna get that until you sign to register the song. So you have to register the song, you have to get publishing, you have to uh, register as a, a composer, a writer, and that's it, you have to pay the fees, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't go around that shit, cause that's your money. Shit, right now we just dropped the, uh, the latest album we dropped, is the THC album by Chris Christopher, produced totally, in, you know, inspired by me. And Chris's, you know, uh, art, um, that's out. You go grab that right now, all digital platforms, you feel me? Also, we got the H album, the H album out right now, the Hustler album, that's out. Produced, I produced half the album, you feel me? And uh, we got another Hustler album coming out. Uh, it's a secret, but it's coming out soon. So we got another Hustler album coming out as well. Um, I'm working on Dope Boy Zoo, that's coming out really soon. So we'll give that to August, September, you feel me? And um, Shit, man, just still working, man. I, I might have new albums, shit, next couple of days. You know what I mean? I might have a single or two in the next few weeks or something. So, still working. You feel me? But make sure you go grab that Chris Christopher. Make sure you go grab that H album. You feel me? And make sure you definitely go grab that Jack artist. You feel me? That's still, that's still on the market. That's still pushing. So, you know what I mean? If you ever need some real game, you need to get refreshing in your brain, go grab that Jack artist. You feel me? But yeah, other than that, stay tuned, man. This shit is Thizzler. Y'all subscribe. Keep it lit. Man, I got love for all y'all, man. For real. For real. For real, man. I appreciate y'all. Super shoot.